Hello everybody, welcome to this webinar. Delighted uh, to have you. My name is uh, Alex Taylor. I'm delighted to be your host today. Today we'll be focusing on duplex, and more specifically on lean duplex stainless steels for water, wastewater and biogas applications. I'm delighted to have with me to discuss this Eric uh, Harkins. Hello, you're head of operational marketing at Aparam. You have over 25 years of experience in the stainless steel industry in different sales, marketing and supply chain functions. In your actual uh, function, you're leading the commercial activities for Aparam's end user customer portfolio. Uh, also with us today, Dr. Charles David. Hello. Hello. You uh, lead project sales at Aparam and you are involved with the commercial development of the company's special grades, including those used for water, wastewater and biogas uh, applications. Before joining the sales team, you spent six years working as a researcher at Aparam's Isberg Research uh, Centre, where you prepared your PhD on the corrosion of lean duplex stainless steel. So welcome to both of you, the perfect people. People, uh, to ask uh, my question. So I'm going to start with you, um, Eric. Now, before yeah. we, we start talking more specifically about Aparam's products and um, applications, for those who don't necessarily know Aparam very well, uh, could we perhaps start by recalling what exactly Aparam does and where it operates? Certainly, Alex. Uh, Aparam is one of the uh, main stainless steel producers in the world with production facilities in uh, Europe and Brazil. We have a production capacity that goes beyond 2.5 million tons in, uh, in production capacity. And we mainly producing, let's say, flat rolled stainless, which is essentially coils, uh, what is processed down to sheets or other products, and that is used in a wide variety of uh, sectors in our industry. Some interesting, let's say, applications you see every day in our daily life, in our home, in our kitchens, in our, in our bathroom, in our, in our cars where uh, stainless is used, but also a significantly high number of industrial equipment are also, uh, let's say, used for stainless. And this is, let's say, coming to uh, sectors like oil and gas, like process industry, like food and beverage. So it's everywhere in our daily and, let's say, professional life. A part of stainless steel, we also have a production of uh, electrical steel and uh, nickel alloys. And uh, all that we are um, serving customers, let's say, in more than 40 countries, let's say, worldwide. So we are a global player and we are recognized by our customers for our service and our differentiated products. So you um, talk about key differentiator uh, products. Um, what type of product are you talking about? Can you give us an example? Well, Aparam, basically, we also are having in our portfolio, let's say, standard grades, but also a lot of special high value grades. And this up to a dimensional size, up to two meter wide, which is a key differentiator for us in our industry. And of course, Aparam, and also part of this, let's say, webinar, is also a major producer of duplex stainless steel. And let's call these steels now, let's say, the new generation of stainless steels that are in the market. OK, right. Well, before we get too uh, far involved, um, we should probably take a moment to explain more precisely, especially for people like me, what duplex stainless steel is and how it differs from other types of stainless steel. Um, perhaps, Charles, you can uh, provide us with some background. Yes, of course. So um, duplex stainless steels, I, I also have some slides here. Uh, duplex uh, stainless steels are one of the four main families of stainless steels, together with austenitics, ferritics and martensitics. The main difference between duplex stainless steels and these other families is the fact that they have uh, two metallurgical faces instead of only one. That's where their, their name came, uh, come from, uh, comes from, actually. Um, if you look uh, at a duplex stainless steel using a microscope, for example, uh, here we can see this image. Uh, this image uh, shows the cross-section of uh, a duplex stainless steel. You will see uh, this layered structure uh, which looks like a sandwich, let's say, of austenite in light gray and uh, ferrite in dark gray. So these are the two uh, faces. And uh, uh, when you see such a microstructure, you could think that the properties of a duplex stainless steel will be the average of these two materials. But actually, no, it is more like a composite material. So it means that the final properties would be will be even higher than if you would take each one of the materials separately. 
But, uh, can you explain to me how that's uh, possible? How do you make this kind of composite microstructure? How do you do that? Yeah, so this microstructure is generated during uh, the, the solidification of the metal, actually, when it's still a liquid and it starts to crystallize to become a solid metal. But it, it is also the result of the other steps of the production, the manufacturing process, uh, especially the annealing and the rolling processes. And of course, uh, in order to obtain such a microstructure, you need a lot of know-how for the about the manufacturing process but you also need a very specific chemical composition we can see here on the right that for our standard duplex dx 2205 we have more chromium than for the austenitic grades the, the uh, traditional austenitic grades on 316l and 304l but you have on the other hand much less nickel so here we can see that we have about half the nickel so 5.5 percent for the 2205 when you compare to 10% uh, of nickel for the 316L. And uh, of course, uh, what's very interesting with duplex is that you have much less nickel, but still you have a much higher uh, corrosion resistance and about twice the mechanical strength of, uh, of the austenitic grades. Right, so the, the, the point of this, uh, du, uh, du, uh, this uh, webinar is to talk about not only duplexes, but, but lean duplexes. What, what exactly is yes. those? So um, lean duplexes, by lean we mean even less nickel and less molybdenum than for uh, uh, standard duplexes. So uh, you can see here uh, we have tried to position in terms of mechanical strength and corrosion resistance our lean duplexes DX2202 and DX2304 and compare them to the standard duplex DX2205 of course but also the the some other grades you can see that uh, for for example DX2202 you have only 2.5 percent of nickel which is quite low and almost no molybdenum and uh, what is very interesting is that the mechanical strength strength remains quite high because uh, these are lean duplexes but, but they still have this duplex microstructure uh, so about twice the mechanical strength of the austenitics and what's also interesting is that their corrosion resistance is of course not as high as the corrosion resistance of standard duplex but it is uh, similar or even better to the traditional austenitic grade 316L. And um, because you have such a good corrosion resistance with such low nickel, it allows for uh, cost reductions, of course. Now, to, uh, you've mentioned cost reductions. Obviously, it's a, a very important uh, point. Um, from what you've been explaining, it seems to me that lean duplexes uh, require quite a, quite a complex production uh, process uh, in general. Um, uh, to, together already with the high prices of raw materials, uh, wouldn't this uh, actually cancel out any uh, savings gained from the reduced use of nickel and molybdenum? Well, uh, although the manufacturing process of these grades requires specific know-how. The lean duplexes uh, have, uh, as already shown by um, Charles, have uh, less nickel. And so they are less affected, let's say, by the fluctuation of uh, raw material elements uh, and specifically with nickel. We have here in the graph, we've shown uh, the evolution of the low surcharges over the last two years. And you see clearly that compared to uh, classical 304, 316L, that the lean duplex and duplex in general are fluctuating less than, let's say, the standard grades in uh, in the uh, in, in our portfolio, and uh, which means also that these lean duplexes offer a kind of more stable pricing to our uh, customers, and to particularly the customers that are active into the construction project markets, which require some kind of, let's say, price visibility and stability, and. Um, in order also to illustrate, let's say, this, um, uh, this application, there is a picture of one of our customers using lean duplex for the manufacturing of uh, stationary tanks, also in white material and in, uh, also in a wide number of applications. And this is a customer of us called Oostwouden, BV in Holland, who has uh, used lean uh, duplex for... Um, this kind of application, this kind of projects. Very impressive uh, yeah. picture indeed. Um, can I press you a little bit? Uh, what, is it, what are we talking about in terms of final price? How much? Well, there we could illustrate, let's say, to have a relative index compared let's, to, to standard grades 304L and 316. So on the picture, 
And on the table, you see a relative index of 100 for 3 or 4 L as a reference, expressed in euro per ton. You see clearly that the lean duplex is about the same price as a 316 L, and uh, as a 3 or 4 L, sorry, and that it's 30% cheaper than a 316 L, again expressed in euro per ton. And uh, it's also like this that the properties of lean duplex are uh, significantly higher than 316L. So the combination, but already also as explained by Charles, that the, between the low cost on the one hand, the high properties on the other hand, makes that lean duplexes are a very, uh, let's say, attractive alternative for water-related projects and uh, which were and which have traditionally depending on, let's say, classical or synthetic stainless steels. Okay, well, uh, Eric, as you just uh, mentioned, water-related and uh, biogas uh, projects, uh, which is, uh, of course, the uh, subject of uh, today's uh, webinar, it's uh, uh, a good uh, opportunity to discuss uh, lean duplex's relevance. Uh, can you, uh, Charles, tell us uh, and explain to us the link uh, between lean duplexes and these particular applications? Of course. So, um, water, wastewater and biogas applications have in common the fact that that they need um, equipment in different sizes, including very big tanks, uh, silos. Uh, we have some examples here on the on this this slide. So digesters, for example. And uh, when you have such equipment in a project, it means uh, very often that these equipment will represent quite a high percentage of the overall tonnage of stainless of the project. So um, when you can uh, reduce the costs with uh, of the material that is used to produce such equipment, then of course you are able to reduce uh, the overall cost of the project. But in the end, what are the, the actual um, advantages, the key advantages of lean uh, duplexes, such as, for example, DX2002? Uh, yeah, DX2202. So um, uh, I would say there are three main advantages. The first one, uh, because we're talking about projects, is the price stability, just like uh, Eric just mentioned. Um, when you have such a project, you don't want the price to, to change between the moment when you build up the offer and the moment when you deliver the equipment to the cost customer. The second uh, aspect would be the corrosion resistance because uh, lean duplex have, let's say, a mid-range corrosion resistance, and that's exactly what this type of application needs. And uh, the third aspect is um, the possibility of a thickness reduction, which means that because lean duplex are stronger, you are able to reduce the thickness of the sheets that you use to produce such equipment, and of course, uh, lower even more the costs. Now, you've just mentioned uh, corrosion uh, resistance. Um, without getting too technical, so that even I can understand it, why is that so important? Um, so, corrosion is important because um, it can uh, lead to the failure of the equipment. And when we're talking about water and wastewater related projects, you can have, for example, tanks. And uh, if there is some corrosion, they could leak, for example. We have here on this picture an example of what is called pitting corrosion. So pitting corrosion is one of the most common types of corrosion and it happens when you have chlorides, which means seawater, uh, marine air, brine, uh, and it is a very localized type of corrosion, which means that you will not have the propagation of the corrosion all over the, uh, all over the surface of the material, but it will initiate on very specific and local spots and then it will propagate in the depth of the material and when you have that you can even uh, perforate the sheet and then it could lead to uh, leakages for example but fortunately at Aperam R&D our colleagues study this type of corrosion uh, quite a lot uh, using uh, electrochemical techniques and so we try to understand very well uh, the, the resistance to pitting corrosion of our grades. Well, how does that work? Can you explain it to me? How does that technique work to understand pitting 
pink rose. Yeah, I, I will try to make it simple. So <laughs> we see here on the right a graph, um, a curve actually that is the result of such electrochemical tests. And what we do is that we sweep the electrochemical potential and we uh, check on the response, let's say, of the material in terms of uh, electrical current. And we do that actually by uh, putting a sample inside a water solution containing the chloride, so seawater. And uh, when you do such a potential sweep, actually at some point you will be able, uh, just like we see on the graph, to detect a very sharp increase of the, the electrical current. And when you have that, it means that the pitting corrosion initiated. So um, the moment when this occurs, we, we note that value of uh, of the potential that we call E pit for um, pitting potential, and we repeat this test uh, 12 times, and then we keep the worst value, and that is what we call the E pit minimum uh, that will be used uh, later on to rank the, the stainless steel grades. And how do Aperum's grades perform? Okay, so we have some, uh, some uh, information here. Uh, we did this test, for example, for lean duplex, uh, of course, to compare them uh, to the austenitics, but also standard uh, duplex. Uh, here we have results at 35 and 50 degrees Celsius. And what we can see is that, uh, okay, the standard lean, du uh, sorry, the standard duplex, uh, DX2205, um, has the highest value. Actually, Actually, uh, for this grade, you don't even have the pitting in this environment because we reach what is called the water stability limit, so uh, the pitting corrosion is not able to be initiated. But if we take a look at the lean duplexes, so the DX2202 and the DX2304, uh, you will see that the 2304 is better uh, than all the other grades, whatever the temperature, and that the DX2202 is at the same level of pitting resistance that at the 316L at 35 degrees Celsius, whereas it is at the same level of pitching resistance that the 304L at 50 degrees Celsius. And that's a very important information because it allows us to know the limits of the material. Now you talked about uh, pitting corrosion. Does that mean the other types of corrosion? I presume so. Of course, there are a lot of types of corrosion. Um, we can mention another type, which is called crevice corrosion. We can see some pictures here, very impressive pictures actually, from equipment from uh, desalination plants. This type of corrosion is also a localized corrosion. It happens when you have a very tiny and confined space, um, for example, behind a screw head or a bolt. And when the brine is able to go inside that space, but since you're not able to renew the environment, it will lead to a very severe type of corrosion. Uh, so that's crevice corrosion. It can happen. Uh, and, and that's why we also study it. And uh, by the way, there is a very uh, recent uh, study uh, funded by the European Union that tried to understand this and also understand it using lean duplexes. That sounds uh, fascinating. I'm yep. learning so much. Stuff. What else did this study tell you? Yeah, so this study was, as I mentioned, a study uh, funded by the European Union. It was led by the French Corrosion Institute together with Veolia, which is one of the major uh, players worldwide in terms of water uh, treatment and water management. And um, it actually uh, tried to assess different stainless steel grades uh, in order to use them for the construction of wastewater plants. So I, ca I could mention one of the tests that were uh, carried out. Uh, we can see here it was the crevice corrosion test using the CREVCOR methodology. And without going too much into details, because this study is, is public, it was published in a scientific journal, um, we can see on this, uh, in this table here 
uh, that the because when you have a condition uh, indicated in green it means that that steel passed the test when you have a red cross it means that it failed and when you have green and had it partially passed but what is important here is that the 2304 was the best grade among the lean duplexes and uh, austenitics and also very interesting is that our dx2202 had exactly the same behavior that the 316l and that's a very important result for us now in terms of uh, thickness uh, reduction it's obviously also a key uh, advantage because it, uh, it can bring additional cost reduction i imagine can you tell us about that of course, that's one of the main uh, advantages, actually, of uh, lean duplex as well. Um, we can see here that I was talking uh, uh, before about the mechanical properties of lean duplexes. Um, we can see the, the yield strength, for example, which is a very important uh, mechanical uh, property of the material. Uh, for the lean duplexes, it will be uh, comprised between, let's say, 530 and 550 megapascal. Uh, you can and compare that to the typical value for austenitics, which is more or less 300 megapascal. So we're talking about almost twice the yield string, and that's the value that will be used in order to know if you can reduce the thickness of the sheets or not. And so it means we can. And uh, we have the example here of a, of a silo filled with water. You see the design here. Previously, this type of silo was made of 304L. It needed uh, 67 tons of 304L, and now it is made of uh, DX2202, and it needs only 48 tons, which means 28% uh, less material. And then you can also imagine that you will have savings with other um, other uh, parts of the project, such as the transportation, for example, uh, and also the manufacturing. Uh, you could also think about uh, the welding, for example. Now, as you mentioned, uh, welding, I'm sure that will uh, interest uh, people who are, uh, are watching us, uh, since they might be wondering uh, if the uh, internal uh, processes like equipment manufacturing uh, would uh, change if uh, using uh, duplex. Um, can you uh, tell us a little bit more about the welding of lean uh, duplexes uh, compared to traditional grades? Yes, of course. This is a very important point because, just like you mentioned, customers want to know uh, how uh, the lean, uh, welding lean duplex is when compared to the austenitics. Uh, we must say that it is very easy. Um, with lean duplexes, you can use any uh, traditional welding uh, process like TIG or laser welding. We have the examples here in this table. And the, the only, let's say, uh, small adjustments that you have to make in order to, to, to weld lean duplex is that you uh, have to choose the right filler metal for the welding. But the good news is that it's exactly the same filler metal that is used for a standard duplex, the X2205, which is widely available. And then the other point is that uh, you have to have a little bit of nitrogen in the composition of the welding gases. Why? Why should you use nitrogen? So, um I was talking uh, before about the microstructure of the duplex. Actually, when you weld uh, the, the lean duplex, you will have a little bit more of ferrite than austenite being generating during the welding. And so when you add the nitrogen to the composition of the gas, um, you uh, counterbalance uh, that effect. And so the nitrogen allows to uh, keep the right, let's say, austenite ratio in the microstructure. And because I'm talking about the microstructure, I would also like to say that um, with lean duplex, because some people uh, listening uh, to us today, they, they might know what the welding of super duplex is, uh, for example. And I would like to say that there is no risk at all uh, of generating the fragile sigma phase when welding a lean duplex, because 
this is quite different from super duplex because the acceptable range of heat input during the welding is much much wider with lean duplexes and so there is no risk uh, of generating that phase and um, I would also like to point out that uh, it's not written here but uh, lean duplexes can easily be welded to austenitic grades that's a very important point uh, there is no problem and we're actually even carrying out a study right now together with, with Veolia uh, in order to improve even more and to adapt even more our products for that because you can imagine that you could have vessels uh, using lean duplex with pipes for example in austenitics. Thank you very much indeed for those uh, insights. Uh, um, I think we've all understood that uh, much better now. Uh, thanks to uh, Charles, what, what are the advantages of lean uh, duplexes? Um, but what, uh, perhaps be uh, the uh, opportunity uh, for you, uh, Eric, to tell us what are the advantages of working with Aparam? Well, I would like to point out, let's say, three things uh, regarding, let's say, these advantages working with Aparam. First of all, um, Aparam is for the customer a supplier of choice. Uh, as we are offering a very complete and very high uh, value product portfolio uh, to the marketplace. Secondly, we have a global and highly integrated service and solution network which provides proximity to the marketplace and also proximity to the customer which is uh, a key uh, element also into our strategy. And third, we also have the ability to support innovative and uh, high performance solution uh, through uh, industry-leading technical and R&D competencies, competencies which creates and which gives added value uh, for our customers. So these three points I would like to highlight as, let's say, a uh, key point for Aparam in terms of, of positioning ver ver versus, uh, let's say, to the, to the marketplace. Mm -hmm. But also, uh, in terms of uh, Aparam's recent uh, announcement about becoming the first stainless steel uh, company to be certified by responsible yeah. uh, steel, um, it would be fair to say also that um, Aparam offers a si significant sustainability uh, advantage. Exactly, Alex. So sustainability is at the heart of everything that we do uh, at Aparam. We not only uh, responsibly producing solutions that are 100% recyclable, but we also have the best in class, let's say, CO2 footprint. And, and the responsible steel certification in that regard helps to um, give to our customers uh, irrefutable proof that the stainless that they purchase has been produced in accordance with the highest standards of ESG practices which are defined jointly between steelmakers and with demanding environmental and social NGOs. Okay, uh, Charles, um, we're coming to the end. What would be your three or four takeaways from what we've discussed today? So, um, about lean duplexes, DX2202 and DX2304, uh, I think uh, we could describe them as being the market's low uh, the market, sorry, best low nickel corrosion resistant alloys. And then uh, I could mention uh, four uh, key points. The first one is that they have the same resistance to localized corrosion uh, as uh, 316L uh, at room temperature or even better. The second point is that they are uh, two uh, times, uh, they, they are twice, sorry, uh, stronger than uh, the austenitic grades. Uh, the third point is that they are up to four times less susceptible um, to fluctuations in the nickel price uh, than 316L and 304L, uh, as Eric explained. And finally, they are easy to weld. Uh, we, we just talked about that. Okay, well, thank you both very much. I've certainly learned a lot. Uh, I hope it's been made much clearer. Thank you very much to uh, Charles mm. and to uh, Eric. Uh, uh, obrigado and uh, Dankuel. Well. And uh, thank you <laughs> thank very you, much uh, for watching and see you soon. Yeah. Goodbye.